Japan is an organic thing. It's uh, like a family in, in many respects too. So if there are rows, sometimes those rows fester. And if, uh, if there's been harsh words or arguments or disputes, then it reaches the point where two people just can't work together anymore. It's better if they part company. Blackmore on more than one occasion kind of got a bit fed up with... Um with all those screams that were going on and that were coming out of Gillen's throat. And um, it's interesting, I think, that um, when, it, when it all fell apart and, and, and Gillen left the band, um, Blackmore... Blackmore's ideal replacement was going to be Paul Rogers, uh, out of Free and Bad Company. He really wanted something with that mellow, bluesy voice, uh, a direct contrast to, to Gillan's, you know, sort of screaming rock and roll tendencies. With increasing friction inside the band, it was not surprising that the group was struggling to produce a worthy successor to the illustrious Machine Head, which was now a worldwide hit. Early sessions for the album, which would become Who Do We Think We Are?, were unproductive and had to be halted in favour of touring commitments. Who Do We Think We Are? Uh, was really weird because I never spoke to Ian Gillen all, all that time we made the LP. I never spoke to him once. Old ladies started coming into it and all these personal problems. You know. I was even holding back ideas. I was saying, I'm not going to give you purple this idea because this is going to another thing. You know. So I was turning out shit. So was everybody else. You know. This left the record companies desperate for new product to fill the huge gap left by the absence of a follow-up to Machine Head. So, the band agreed to a request from their Japanese label to record some of the dates which they performed in August 1972 for release in Japan only. The group were in fact so pleased with the results that the live album was quickly scheduled for worldwide release, giving the labels a much needed product and the fans, an all-time classic album. I've seen it with, with bands and artists where in the dressing room before they go on, they're threatening each other with lawsuits. And as soon as they get on stage, they forget all that and they smile at each other and they play because they're playing music because music is the common bond. And, uh, and I think in Deep Purple's case, that's what was going on here. It was almost like you were getting a brand new album. You knew the titles of those tracks. But the songs were completely different to the ones you were familiar with from the studio records. Machine Head just went out the window. You know, it had all the tracks that you wanted to hear on the Made in Japan. And it sounded better than the originals, uh, which is an extraordinary thing to do with a live album. What you get with Made in Japan is warts and all, and there aren't a lot of warts on there. It's a fantastic performance. Um, arguably, Blackmore has never been better in his whole career. Uh, and the sound is just great. It's powerful. It's it's live. It's up front, and it's not tinkered with. When you're recording, you find that uh, there's one engineer and a couple of T boys around, and it doesn't really inspire you to turn out your best. Whereas when you're on stage, you're playing to the people, and they inspire you. Obviously, you know. I suppose it's an ego thing, really. You like to kind of basically show off, show them what you know, and. And you get really inspired, you get uh, a real exciting thing going with the crowd. You do seriously feel an immense necessity to be good. And it, it stems from the fact that, that you are being paid by a lot of people um, to do... To excel. To excel. Yeah. And to excite them. Captured a moment. And thank God they did, in a sense, because it all sort of dissipated after that. So it was really good to have that them at their height. Even though it was a double album, the fact that the band allocated a large portion of the set to extended instrumental workouts meant there were only seven tracks on the Made in Japan double album, but every one is a remarkable performance. This is real live recording with no overdubs or fixes. Unlike today's live albums, this really is how Deep Purple sounded on stage. Live albums were generally a bit of a hit and miss affair. Um, you can detect where things have been recreated and redone in the studio after the event. In a lot of cases with live albums, the only thing that's live is the actual audience mics. 
was made in Japan, what you see is what you get. I think it's a very accurate representation of Deep Purple Live, and probably more accurate than some live albums that came later with heavy metal bands. I mean, Judas Priest, Unleashed in the East, famously came out at the end of the, towards the end of the 70s, uh, and was always a subject of much speculation about how it had been cleaned up. Um, you don't tend to get that with Made in Japan. The difference between Made in Japan and other live albums is that most other live albums from the late 70s onwards weren't live. The Made in Japan album kicks off with Highway Star, recorded in Osaka on August the 16th, 1972. It's like the ultimate driving song, really. It starts with this real pulsing beat, and um, Blackmore comes in with some sort of almost absent-minded slashes on, on his guitar strings, and uh, the whole thing just builds and builds and builds, and there's a real throbbing thing from John Lord on the organ. John Lord manages to sort of interweave all sorts of different bits and pieces of music into his little intros and then and it sort of develops into this sort of rock thing, you know, and he does that quite a lot. That's one of his techniques that he uses and, uh, and that works particularly well on Highway Star. It's, it's one of those tracks that just relentlessly rocks on and on and on at a tremendous rate. very souped up sound of, uh, of guitar, the guitars, the keyboards, the vocals, everything was completely overdriven, everything was fast, it was much louder. Um, you know, it was certainly a huge leap on from what Deep Purple were doing, say, two or three years earlier. Deep Purple, over the years, have tended to be rather uh, dismissed, almost, in comparison to many other, other great groups from the 70s. Um, I think their achievement is, is on a par with, say, certainly with Led Zeppelin in many respects and alongside ELP and all the dramatic groups from the early 70s um, who were creating very original, exciting, dramatic music and Highway Star, I think, really sums up the whole sound and essence of Deep Purple. Interesting thing uh, about Highway Star as an opener on the Made in Japan album is there's a degree of restraint. We all know how much they used to like to get carried away with the improvisation. Um, there is, of course, a fair bit of improvisation on it, but it doesn't get too carried away. It's probably the closest thing on the album that follows uh, a basic song format. You get the impression that they're just warming up the audience.